So, um, this talk is uh, going to be about uh, a variant of the satisfiability problem in uh, the streaming model of computation. Um, the results in this paper, they were, um, uh, they were from a collaboration between two groups of researchers, which is why uh, the long list of authors. Uh, what we are going to look at um, is uh, called the min ones two sat problem. And uh, this problem is a generalization of vertex cover. So, what is the vertex cover problem? In the vertex cover problem, you have a graph and you want to find um, a set of uh, vertices that you can pick. So, that when you remove the vertices, the graph that you have left, um, it, uh, it, is, it is edgeless. So, now, if you have a vertex cover instance and you have these edges, if you think of these edges as clauses like um, an edge between u and v, if you think of the edge as, uh, as the clause u or v, then, um, um, then solving this, uh, this problem is the same as uh, solving, uh, finding um, a set of uh, k variables that you can set to 1 to satisfy the formula that you would get from translating the clauses that way. So, that is that's a way of uh, interpreting vertex cover. What you can do now is um, you can consider a generalization of this uh, problem uh, as a satisfiability problem. So, uh, when you do that, what you get is uh, min 1's 2 sat and uh, a min 1's 2 sat uh, instance is just a 2 CNF formula and what you want to do is set the minimum number of uh, instances to uh, 1 to satisfy the formula. Uh, it generalizes vertex cover. Um, we will we'll look at this problem in a, a specific model that is, uh, that is a, 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 ge a generalization of the standard streaming model. First of all, in the standard streaming model, what you have is that the input can only be read sequentially and uh, you may make multiple passes over the input, but you always have to read the input in the same sequence. Um, and what you have is that your memory that your algorithm can use is, uh, is logarithmic in the size of the input. This is the standard streaming model. But now we look at um, this problem in the parameterized streaming model, where we consider a parameterized version of the problem. Uh, a parameterized uh, problem is just uh, any problem, any decision problem that um, you have some parameter for. For vertex cover, this parameter would be the solution size for uh, problems like dominating set or uh, independent set. There would also be solution size. There can be other parameters like tree width of the, if it is a graph problem. Uh, so, you can have many different kinds of parameters for your problems. Uh, a parameterized problem is just a decision problem combined with some parameter. So, now we look at uh, we look at min 1's 2 sat in this as a, as a parameterized problem in the streaming setting. So, what we have is um, we, we want to uh, solve the problem not in logarithmic space, but uh, uh, in space f of k times log n and uh, we want to do this. Uh, by making as few passes as possible, preferably bounded by some function of the parameter. So, um, in the th these two problems are uh, are interchangeable if you if you only care about fixed parameter tractability. So, uh, Mishra et al. they had they had a result uh, which showed that min ones two sat and uh, vertex cover can be reduced to each other while preserving the parameter. This, this will mean that uh, whatever kernelization algorithms you have uh, for vertex cover will carry over to min 1's 2 sat. And of course, if you have a kernelization algorithm for min 1's 2 sat, it carries over to vertex cover. Uh, in streaming setting, is the running time also is parameter? Uh, actually, in the, in the general streaming setting, we uh, in the standard uh, streaming model, what we have is uh, the space we uh, space is bounded by uh, the log of the uh, the problem size in the in the standard streaming setting so the maximum time you can uh, your algorithm can use is polynomial anyway but now we have we have this space requirement so we did not need to 
bound the time requirement in the streaming model because it was logarithmic space. It would be polynomial time. But now we generally want to have uh, algorithms that are fixed parameter, uh, have fixed parameter tractable running times. But there's no, there's no explicit bound. So uh, min 1's 2sat and vertex cover, they are, they are the same basically in the, uh, when you consider them as general parameterized problems. But uh, if you look at the streaming model, they are, they are different. Vertex cover is solvable in a single pass using uh, space uh, O of k squared log n. And this was proved in a paper by Chitney et al. in SODA 2015. Um, but we show in, the, in our paper, we show that uh, min 1's 2 sat in the, in the parameterized streaming setting, it requires at least k plus 1 passes. Any uh, not any arbitrary f, there are hard instances which will require k plus 1 passes. Uh, uh, you meant, uh, yeah. um, this is uh, for any d sat, uh, d greater than or equal to 2. So, this is, this is how, uh, this is the uh, organization of the, of the uh, talk. We have already looked at uh, the problem and the model. And uh, what I'm going to show next is a k plus 1 pass streaming algorithm for min 1's 2 sat. And then we'll look at a lower bound that says that if you just care about the number of passes made, the, the, the k plus 1 passes pass streaming algorithm is optimal. So this is, uh, this is the theorem uh, that I'm going to uh, prove now. Um, you can, you can solve instances of min 1's 2 sat in k plus 1's 1 passes using space k plus 2 to the k, uh, uh, k times 2 to the k plus k squared times log n. And this is, this is basically by um, using a, a 1 pass kernelization for vertex cover and then um, using uh, the clauses in, um, clauses in your formula to extend solutions to that vertex cover, uh, vertex cover instance. So the way the algorithm works is, first it will, you have a, you have a formula and uh, this is a 2 CNF formula. So uh, you have monotone clauses, you have implications and you have anti-monotone clauses. What you can do is, you, you can look at just the, the monotone clauses and think of them as uh, edges in a graph and you can use the, uh, the one pass streaming kernelization for vertex cover, uh, which was uh, from a paper by Chitnis et al. You can use that and you can obtain a kernel which has, which has size, um, which has, which has size uh, k squared. Uh, and using that kernel, you can obtain a set of starting solutions for your uh, monotone clauses. And then what you do is uh, you make additional passes over um, over your input to um, to extend your starting solutions. So this is this is how you do it. Um, if you have uh, an instance of vertex cover, you can find uh, a set of uh, set of vertices of size uh, at most k squared, which uh, will be equivalent to the original instance. When you when you are only um, consider solutions of size at most k, so basically a kernel of size k squared, you can obtain this um, in one pass. So once you obtain that that kernel, uh, you can you can brute force over the kernel and obtain um, at most uh, two to the k minimal solutions for your for your kernelized instance. So, what you do is, you suppose these are your mono, th this is your entire formula, and these are your monotone clauses in your formula. What you do is, you look at them as uh, edges in a graph, and then you use your vertex cover kernelization. You use your vertex cover kernelization to obtain a set of minimal solutions for these uh, these monotone clauses. So, you're only looking for solutions of size at most k, and you're looking for minimal solutions. When you want only solutions of this kind, then the number of them will be at most 2 to the k. And this you can find using, 
using the standard vertex cover kernelization, which has also been translated to the streaming model. And then what you do is you find uh, these solutions in one pass, and then over k additional passes, this is what you do. You, you have uh, these solutions will be will be satisfying all the all the monotone clauses in your in your formula. What you want to do is to find uh, to extend these solutions so that uh, they also satisfy the whole formula. Uh, while you extend these solutions, you might find out some are not uh, extensible, and um, you might want to throw them out. So this is what you'll do over the next k passes. So in the next k passes, what you'll do is uh, you'll go over uh, the formula, and for each clause, you look at uh, you look at a satisfying assignment in your set of solutions. Uh, you look at a partial satisfying assignment in your set of solutions, and you'll if if your clause is uh, is an implication, what you'll do is you'll extend it. If it if it sets some variable appearing in uh, some variable appearing in the clause is um, set to one by your assignment, then you also set uh, the corresponding implied variable to one. Uh, this is this is for when your uh, clause is a, as an is an implication. When it's uh, when it's an anti-monotone clause, then you know that both the variables in the clause must be set to zero for the clause to be satisfied. So if uh, your satisfying as uh, your partially satisfying assignment sets both both these uh, variables to one, then you have to remove them, remove it from uh, your set of solutions. So once you've done this, you, you'll do this for k passes. Once you've done this, you'll have you'll have extended your solution and you'll have possibly reduced their size. But if there was a solution for the the original instance which set at most k variables to one they will still remain in your set of solutions you'll you'll only need to extend your partial solutions k times to um, to obtain a complete solution if one exists and uh, finally what you'll do is uh, you'll check if this set of solutions that you've stored in memory you can store this set in memory because the the set of solutions is of size at most 2 to the k so you can store them in memory and then check if you still have any solutions remaining. So if you do that, um, you will be able to determine whether or not your, your whole formula can be satisfied by setting at most k variables to 1. Uh, any questions about the, the algorithm? So I'll move on to showing that um, uh, k plus 1 passes is, is kind of optimal. If you um, restrict the space to, if you restrict the space to uh, something less than this, which is what we want in our model. So this is the theorem I'm going to uh, going to prove. Uh, any any streaming algorithm for min one's d sat that uh, solves it in k passes. This is k, not k plus one. If it solves the uh, min one's uh, min one's dsat and k passes, then it will use at least this much space, which is which is not f of k times log n for any f. So what we will obtain is that uh, uh, the the algorithm we, we had previously was optimal when we only uh, care about the number of passes. So in a in a min one's uh, two sat instance. Uh, uh, the way the the previous algorithm worked was you uh, started with a set of solutions and then you were you would extend these solutions by looking at implications but what if um, suppose your your implication is x implies y but uh, x appears much later than y in the stream and this happens for for many um, many clauses then what will happen is that you can't store all the y's and then y might imply some other variable what you what you would do is first uh, determine that x implies y so extend a solution to include y and then you would have to extend the same solution to include z but if these uh, uh, these variables were appearing in 
in uh, an adversarial order, you'd, you'd have to make multiple passes over, over your stream. So this is, this is the kind of instance that will be produced by this problem called post-order pointer chasing. So this, this problem was, uh, was introduced uh, in a paper by Guha and McGregor. And they showed that um, any p-pass streaming algorithm for this problem, um, I, I'll, I'll explain what this, uh, uh, this expression here means. But any p-pass streaming algorithm for this problem requires at least spa uh, space at least this much. So it will become clear uh, what these two quantities are in the next diagram. So um, an instance uh, of this problem is um, a tree and a function defined on the, on the tree. So the tree is a complete tree, which, is, um, which has uh, three children per, per node, and it has L plus one levels. And you want to determine the value of some function at the, at the nodes. So this function comes along with your tree. Um, and uh, you want to determine its, its value. So the way it is defined, this, this expression will, will mean is its value at some leaf node equal to 1. So this is an instance of the problem. So uh, the problem is, uh, is it consists of a, of a tree. You, you have this tree here. And its vertices are labeled uh, by a post order traversal. And every vertex has, uh, is assigned a value by the function. The leaves are only assigned 0, 1 values. Uh, and uh, the non-leaf nodes, the values they are assigned are basically the, um, the locations of their children. Um, so uh, the, the root node here, it's uh, assigned the value to. It's telling you to go to uh, the second child. The value here assigned here is 1. It's telling you to go, the, go to the first child. So th because f is defined this way, what this quantity will mean, this is, uh, this is in, a, in a rough fashion, but this is, this is not the exact uh, quantity. You have to define a second function to, uh, really, uh, to really pose it as a question here. Uh, but uh, what you want to basically do is you want to follow this path from the root to the leaf and uh, determine the value of f at that leaf. So this is your instance. Uh, the, <coughs> the vertices come to you in post-order traversal fashion. And uh, you'll be, you're given the, the values of the f function at those vertices. Um, because this, uh, these vertices come to you in a post-order traversal, uh, you really don't need to know what the vertices are. You can just give the values of the function. So a stream uh, for this, an instance of, for an instance of this problem would be the, this is, this is the, the branching factor, this is the depth, and then the values of the function uh, for all the vertices. So this is, this is what, a, what an instance of your problem would be. And uh, what I'm going to show next is that you can convert this to an instance of min 1's 2 sat. Um, any questions about uh, this uh, instance? Uh, so w what you can do is um, this is basically the, this problem basically involves following a directed path from the root to a leaf. So the way you can encode this as a these, uh, these clauses are too small. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, but uh, the way you can encode this information about uh, the directions on the, these edges is uh, you, can, you can form, a, form clauses for, for each directed edge. So at, at 14, the, the value of the function is, is 10. So what, what, what I've done here, which you probably can't see, but what I've done here is uh, create a clause x14 implies x10. And then again, at, at this node, the value of the function is 8. And I've created the clause x10 implies x8. And the, because the, the values at, at these uh, 
leaf nodes are uh, all 0 1. Uh, what I do is uh, I create uh, clauses that say that um, these nodes need to have 0 1 values. So, whatever the function values are at, at those nodes. And now, what you, what, you, what you can do is you can force this uh, the child of the root. You, you, you find out what the child of the root is. You can force it to be set to 1. And if uh, the, the node you reach by following the path from the root is uh, has a has a function value of uh, function value of 0 then your the the clauses that you produce that will be a no instance for min 1's 2 set so you can you can set uh, you can generate a clause forcing the the child of the root uh, that the function points to uh, you can force it to 1 and then you'll be able to generate a clause so, but generating this clause uh, involves uh, uh, it might not be clear from this picture that it can be generated in a uh, as a stream, but uh, what you need to observe is that uh, all the you, you know where in this stream uh, a specific vertex in your tree will appear. So, uh, once you know the value that is assigned to that vertex, you also know what kind of a clause to create uh, because that value will tell you which child of the node you want to point to and uh, just knowing it's the the position of of this node in the stream will also tell you the position of uh, will also tell you the label of of its child and uh, using just using the function value at, at that node you can you can generate the clause uh, you can generate this clause so this way you can you can generate a stream uh, which will which will give you give you um, this equivalence so you can if you have a theory k plus 1 level instance of of the um, post order pointer chasing problem uh, you can convert it to a min 1's dsat instance where the number of variables is t to the k that's the total number of um, uh, nodes in the in the tree and the solution size requirement for that instance will be k. So, you, you have this equivalence between uh, p o p c and min 1's d sat and then what you what you can do is you can just plug in your equivalence to into this theorem and because this n is t to the k what you will have have here is um, n to the 1 by k. So, if you recall uh, n to the 1 by k by n to the 1 by 2 k by 2 to the k this is this this cannot be f of k times log n. So, once you have the the equivalence you can plug it into the theorem and you can uh, get this uh, you get this result. So, any um, streaming algorithm uh, which solves the um, the min 1's 2 sat pro, uh, d sat problem must uh, use uh, k plus 1 passes if if it has to use space f of k times log n. Uh, so, that was the lower bound and what we had shown earlier was uh, was that you can solve instances of min 1's 2 sat in uh, this much space and in k plus 1 passes. So, uh, if you just care about the number of passes it is it is optimal and the the other results in this uh, paper were a uh, uh, d to the k pass algorithm for the problem this is this follows from just uh, simulating the standard algorithm in the in the streaming model but uh, one of the nice things about this algorithm is it it has a bad number of it uses a really bad number of passes but it uses very little space and uh, we we were also this is this is a typo this should be k plus 2 we were able to obtain a k plus 2 pass kernelization for a for the problem and that followed from um, using the vertex cover kernelization and basically doing uh, what the the k plus 1 pass algorithm did but uh, uh, storing the the results in the kernel uh, it's pretty straightforward so uh, thank you for listening that was all i wanted to talk about so if we allow uh, space to be little
no there is a there is a lower bound from communication complexity if you don't consider um, if you if if you if you do not parameterize the problem if you do not talk about uh, space usage bounded by a function uh, of the parameter times log n if you do not have uh, that kind of a bound on the space you can you can show that uh, it, the problem will require uh, at least uh, linear space in the size of the input and because you're parameterizing you're you're able to uh, obtain this kind of a result it's it's pretty straightforward it's just uh, communication complexity reduction 